Hello again. This is Tithus, and this is episode two of my Mech Warriors 5 accessibility playthrough for a Lance Might of Mine who has vision impairment. Um, it was pointed out yesterday that I didn't introduce myself. Yesterday, I suppose, is relative at this point. Uh, so, the last episode is what I meant to say. Um, uh, I am. Typhus. I love playing Mech Warrior games, as can be seen. I uh, started with Mech Assault on the Xbox, uh, which is in the Mech Warrior universe. I had to look it up because I was worried that the information I had wasn't canon. But Mech Assault is Mech Warrior just on the Xbox and console version. Um, so that's where I started. Original Xbox. I then did uh, MWO. Mech Warrior Online for a very long time. Um, all the way up until like uh, their big arena update. That's kind of when I stopped. Just after they came out with the clans and whatnot. Then of course there was a hiatus and Mech Warrior 5 is now up. And we have a new DLC looming called the Dragon's Gambit. So it's as good enough time as any to uh, get caught up with all the DLCs which I have. Uh, I'm currently playing with two mods installed uh, they are not game changing or game breaking mods they fix some arguable issues number one uh, the first mod is just simple it makes the UI in the store view easier to read so at a glance you can see if it has an Excel engine Fibo uh, Fibo Fibro Ferris, endoskeletons, uh, and and stuff like that. Whether and then whether or not it has mask, AMS, uh, ECM, without having to actually go two to three more menus into the specific mech details in order to see the special stuff that it has. The next one is a double heatsink fix. So in this game. They have done a really good job of taking all of the builds from Battletech and putting them in the code and putting them in the game. So, for example, uh, the royal variants of mechs that are usually Star League era or very, very good and are crammed full of lost tech. Uh, they usually roll with double heat sinks in the engine. And it says in the code, in the base game, that they have double heat sinks but the cooling isn't there so with this build where it has all the extra firepower of a star league era battle mech it doesn't have the equivalent cooling required in order to actually make it viable in the game so this is a fix for that and specifically that it makes the double heat sinks on the engines work and this is the ones where they're built in not the ones where you can swap them out uh, and those are the only two uh, mods that I'm using uh, for this campaign uh, mainly because another one of my Lance mates has found uh, this information and has also found out that uh they really like the Royal Variant mechs, and this is pretty much the only way to make them viable without having to strip them down and turn them into their non-Royal counterparts. So, uh, yeah, should have led with that last episode. Uh, my Lance mate that's going to be joining me, hopefully we're going to unlock co-op in the campaign today. The Lance mate that's going to be joining me, his name is Mock, and we have been playing games together for about 10 years now. He'll be introducing himself. He jumps in. Um, also, way bigger Mech Warrior game fan than I. Um, less on the lore uh, because I read a lot of books and stuff like that, so I can get really nerdy with dates. Anyways, let's let's cut into the game. So, if you recall, yesterday we did the tutorial. The Nyx Cavaliers got stomped uh, by some mercenary outfit. Uh, 
and Nikolai, uh, our character's father, is presumably dead. He got uh, tore apart in his victor by a king crab. Uh, and we fled the the, uh, the very prime in our leopard. Um, we also then con got were contacted by Spears, part of the Interstellar Expeditions. I think the name of his company was. Um, and who has a plan to get us out? Uh, we did raid mission in order to get supplies from raiders in order to fix our leopard and support. When we left yesterday, we have to speak to our lead tech, Fahad, and we also had to speak to our uh, ops commander, uh, Rihanna Kemp. So, as we load in here, we have we are inside the Leopard Mech Bay facing aft. Um, Mech Bays 1 and 2 are on the left-hand side as we face aft. And Bay 1 currently has our Javelin in it, which uh, I'm going to have to put in for repairs. And Bay 2 has our Centurion in it that it was absolutely creamed uh, in the flight from the Barry Prime. So, I am going to talk to Fahad first. Hi, boss man. That was quite the haul you brought back. Gonna make the repairs a bit easier now. But don't go getting stars in your eyes or nothing. I'm overworked as it is, and this shit needs a lot of loving, eh? So your Centurion is still gonna take plenty of time to fix. But yeah, like I said, nice job out there. Your old man will be proud. Now, if there's nothing else, gonna get back at it, alright? Lot of work to do. Story of my life. Yes, Fahad. I'm sorry to interrupt your work when you told me to come interrupt your work. Oh, uh, that's the other thing. There's a lot of banter on the ship, especially when Vok is involved. My other landsmates are involved. Uh, we talk a lot of smack about Fahad and Rihanna, uh, and that's because, well, that's normal. So we've entered the repair interface for the battle mechs. I'm selecting the Javelin now. Uh, we are getting the warning again that we're in a conflict zone. If you recall, being in a conflict zone, it's harder to get the raw resources, time, and um, presumably like equipment and whatnot needed in order to repair the battle mechs as efficiently as possible. So in the game, it's, it's simulated by adding bonus time and cost. We're going to repair this mech. Total repairs are 57,001, and the repair time is going to be seven days, which means that we netted, ooh, approximately 600,000 on the last mission. No. Less cost of the repairs. And now we got a week. So that's in, and I'm going to head towards the front of the leopard, up these sets of stairs here in order to talk to Rihanna Carmel. As we go on the bridge, she is standing across the hollow table, and we are going to we're going to speak with her now and see what she has to say. Good work with those raiders, Commander. While you were planet side, I got word from Spears about the plan he's put in place for us. Take a listen. Rihanna, Commander, good news. I think I can get you safely past the blockade with the aid of a local mining company. To make everything work, I'm going to have to find you guys a recycled mercenary identification number. A new identity, essentially. Nick's Cavaliers, for all intents and purposes, no longer exists. I'll match that number to a new name of your choosing once the time comes. So, think about what you want to call yourselves. While I arrange that, you're going to have to do a little work for the mining company in exchange for their cooperation. If things go well, they've agreed to hire you to transport some precious cargo out of the system aboard an inbound jump ship. Using the new mercenary ID and with a legitimate contract in hand, you should have no problem slipping through the blockade. I've attached the particulars to this message. I'll be in touch once you've completed the mission. Good luck. I already reviewed the information Spears sent. The mission is a straight-up protect and defend op. 
Seems these raiders have been harassing the mining company, among others. Stealing from them, extorting them, killing innocent civilians when their demands weren't met. I've uploaded the pertinent details into the mission briefing, so I won't repeat them here. You're good to launch any time, Commander. Roger that. I'll see you on the other side. I'll see you on the flip side. All right. So uh, during that exchange, uh, when Spears was talking, his holographic bust appeared on the table. Other than that, we just have the display of the very system. Nothing too crazy. Uh, to recap, we are going to be hiding ourselves as a new mercenary group with a legitimate contract. Here in the transmissions menu, we have a transmission from Major Campbell uh, titled Imminent Threat. The mining company's settlement is vulnerable to raider attack, Commander, so we've got to protect it. I'll drop you in at a safe distance. Once on the ground, head there and defend it. Should be simple in and out mission, but no plan survives contact with the enemy, as the saying goes, so be prepared for whatever comes. Good luck. I believe that saying was actually from Churchill. It's amazing that it's made it, you know. Uh, shit. 1,240 years into the future? Or something like that? So we've accepted that one. We're going to go to contracts now, and then we have the debrief here from um, Interstellar Expeditions and Spears. This breaks down the fact that it is a defense operation. Uh, it is a campaign type. It'll take 37 days to complete this, and we will be on glacial ice once again in the dawn. Visibility is reduced uh, because of snow. The mining company settlement is vulnerable to radar attacks, so you've got to protect it once on the ground. Head there and defend it. Should be a simple in and out. Spear says, repeating exactly what Major Campbell said. We're going to negotiate. We are going to negotiate for... Yeah, that's 200. Oh, yeah. We're going to negotiate for damage coverage. No, we're not. We're going to go with extra. So, damage coverage is like insurance. So, if I get it, uh, I'm covered repair costs up to 400,000 C bills additional. Um, C bill payout is they're going to give me an extra 250 C bills regardless. So a lot of times it's good to take the insurance if you think you're going to get wrecked. And then sometimes, especially right, right now, I want to take the extra extra C bills because I don't think I'm going to get I'm, I don't think I'm going to take enough damage to make a huge loss in money since the javelin, if you rip it apart piece by piece, is probably only worth 200,000 But even then, I would prefer not to be ripped the apart. The is really time. kicking up, Commander. Your visibility will be limited out there. On this screen, we are at the mission deployment screen. You see our four bays. Bay one has our javelin in it. We are reminded that our javelin is being worked on, so we have to wait seven days to pass before we can deploy on field. It does that all automatically. Uh, that's really important, though, uh, on some of the later missions where everything's timed. Attention. Prepare for battle mech departure. We are in the Leopard. We have been loosed, and we are now rotating on the turn. During that short exchange, 
the leopard door opened, I walked out, the leopard door closed, and now you can hear the leopard taking off and leaving the, uh, the field. So, glancing around, it is dawn. Nice orange sky. Scattered clouds, varying orange and purple color. Uh, the hills around us are boulder-type rocky with some jutting stalactite-looking things. Um, like the wind blowing and water freezing in an upward direction to make giant spikes. Our first target is 1,600 meters in front of us. Uh, that's our defense waypoint. That's our head. Everything snow. That, the the visibility is supposed to be low. It's not low right now. It hasn't been snowing, or it's not currently snowing. I should say we were walking through a saddle in uh, this rock formation, and you can see there's an aircraft currently uh, not on sensors yet, but visual contact above where we're supposed to defend. I also see a ground vehicle. There's the settlement up ahead, Commander. Looks like the Raiders have already begun their attack. Get in there and protect those civilians. On my way. Please help us. The Raiders are attacking our settlement. There are women and children here. Brianna, something's interfering with my sensors. I think the Raiders have set up some sort of jamming device nearby. I'll see if I can locate it. All right, so I've dropped the helicopter, just took out an SRM carrier, short-range missiles. I'm assuming you guys knew that. Uh, I'm currently engaging some tanks. I see we have on scope. There are two more helicopters coming in from behind. So we're gonna flip around and take care of that. The defensible position is inside a valley with three entry points. And we have to be very careful not to kick, kick over their buildings, because that counts against them. There's a bar at the top center that says that 85% of the settlement is still intact. We want to keep that as high as possible. Another aircraft. Strafe again. Down. We got a tank. Scorpion light tank has an AC-5 on it, machine gun. Also down. Two more tanks on our six. Oh no! That one's an SRM carrier. That would have ended us. SRM-20. Another Scorpion light tank, AC-5. Take a hit to my left arm. We have another SRM carrier in the distance. Approximately 500 meters, we're going to be closing. Out of range. In range. Those SRM carriers sneak up behind you and they'll end you. Especially even when you're in the bigger mix. They go all the way up to like SRM 60. It's insane. For the moment. It appears the Raiders aren't done causing trouble just yet. They're headed for the company's main processing facility on the other side of the mountain. You need to get there and thwart that attack, Commander. Understood. It is time for us to go thwart. We have to go through uh, what looks like a depression, a little valley between two of the boulder cliffs, approximately 800 meters to the east. It branches off into two pathways. We are going to be taking the upper pathway on the right-hand side. The ground here is littered with larger than usual boulders, but the javelin is still strong enough to kick them over. That does not hurt us. Our sensors are yeah, getting my fucked. sensors are getting worse. The jamming device the raider set up is at the top of this pass, Commander. You're going to have to manage as best you can until you're able to take it out. I have a vehicle, ground vehicle, on what, what's left of my sensors. And I absolutely fucking just took an AC-5 
right to the chest, and then the tank blew up too close, so I took damage on all parts. There's a secondary tank inside the compound. Now it looks clear, we're moving on to the jamming device. Our lasers aren't working as well as I want, so I'm going to go kick it. I'm impatient. Okay. We go. Perfect. Your sensors should have cleared up. Yeah, much better. There is a tank. So this is now. You'll be able to detect enemies at a significant distance. Just in time, too. That mining facility is getting hit hard, Commander. I didn't mean to interrupt, but we have a tank here that is currently hanging off a cliff. Um and has been spawned into the side of a mountain. And it is amazing. It's like uh, the, the horses from Skyrim. Where physics need not apply. But we took care of it. Alright, so I'm going to take a shortcut and just jump off this mountain here. Because we have a new facility that is being bombarded and it is already down 25% and falling rapidly. I have six vehicles on scope, seven. So we're going to get started here. We have an SRM carrier. It's down. Scorpion light tank. Oh, the uh, too numerous to count in battle right now. Mini, mini, mini. All right, there's another two tanks down. Facility is at 65%. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine contacts on radar. Fuck. Go around. Much more damage and I am aware. Campbell. All right, well, time to go fast. Time to start kicking tanks. I take a little bit of damage every tank I kick. Uh, but I need uh, I need them to stop damaging the facility. Oh, I gotta go to the side. All right, so there is a lot of facility between me and the rest of the enemy vehicles. Um, the shortcut is, of course, running through the compound, but then there is the risk of absolutely messing up the compound. Oh, it looks like I'm going to have to go to one of the tanks to pop. So, hopefully we don't do as much damage as the enemy. So there is an SRM carrier just sitting here destroying everything. I'm going to land on top of the apartment building. Wouldn't worry about that. No, that wasn't important either. Alright, got another tank down. Uh, there's one off in the distance. I have to navigate these, like, uh, tents, and I think these are farming buildings. Alright. Another tank. SRM carrier. Enemy VTOLs inbound on your position, Commander. That ego is a piece of heavy machinery with tons of firepower. If left unchecked, it will do a lot of damage to the settlement. You uh, should prioritize taking it out over the smaller enemies. All right, we got an Igor on the field, and that guy has four AC2s and is the bane, the absolute bane of light knights. Um, they're heavily armored. They're currently pummeling the piss out of us. Dropped it. We have three more VTOLs on us. Two. One. You guys are clear. A ground unit has appeared on radar, so we're going to head on over to The plant is currently at 55%. This tank is Good stuck work, on a roll. Perfect. The company happy. Prepare for exfil. I'm on my way. Mission complete. Our reputation went up. We are now unknown 
as opposed to nobodies or whatever everyone works. So that means we are ranked two in reputation. We've got spy, uh, 450 C bills and 30 reputation. We're on the salvage screen. We got three shares. And it's all crap, which is standard. But there is a medium laser, a machine gun, and we'll take an AC-5. Oh, never mind. We want it. Uh, one. Looks like we're taking an LRM-10. SRM-2s are useless. This is the... Uh, what is this? The scoreboard screen where it shows that I, Commander Mason, had 32 kills. Nine of them were air units, 23 vehicles. Uh, I took 76 points of damage. I dealt 378 points of damage. Total damages were 41,000. So on that one, we made about 410,000 sea bills. The debrief screen has ap appeared. Uh, debriefing for imminent threat, Major Grandma Campbell says, outstanding job. Those raiders were intent on shutting down the entire mining operation. And that mobile jamming tower almost put a spanner in the works. Luckily, it didn't, thanks to you. There's a lot of people down there that owe you their lives tonight, Commander. As for what happens now, Spears has been in touch. It seems we have one more mission to execute before the mining company will sign off on the transport contract. We need that contract to co as cover to get past the blockade, so we don't have much choice but to do as they ask. Ask. Enunciation is important. Uh, come see me when you've cleaned up and we do the full rundown. We've got an additional 50,000 C bills, bringing us to about 460,000 in profits. We again start in the mech bay. Only this time we don't have to talk to Pod, so that's always a bonus. Pulling up the battle mech repair screen, we need to repair our mechs. The actual total is going to be 49,007 days because we are in a combat zone. So now we are going to go up to the bridge for more talking. We arrive on the bridge. We see that Rihanna is in her usual spot across the hollow table. Commander, it turns out the bastards who attacked us and who have set up the blockade are a mercenary outfit by the name of Black Inferno. Unfortunately, that's about all we know at the moment. Spears and I will try to dig up more information if we can. The time will come when we can extract some proper vengeance. But right now, we have more pressing concerns. Inferno forces are closing in on our location. That means we only have a small window in which to fulfill our obligations to the mining company and haul ass out of here. The company wants us to take down the raiders for good by destroying their base of operations. Once that's done, they'll arrange passage for us aboard the inbound jump ship. I've detailed the mission briefing and it's waiting for your sign off. You're free to launch whenever you're ready, Commander. Roger that. All right. So this is the mission that might get us out of the system and out from underneath. Uh, I forgot their damn name. The the naughty mercenary outfit that killed my daddy. The black something or another. All right, so we are in the uh, screen. We're gonna view the transmissions. Uh, there are currently two transmissions here. One is from Fahad. Fahad says, hey boss man, from what Rihanna says, the next mission is gonna be a bit of a doozy. Good thing I've gotten the Centurion fit as a fiddle and ready to go, eh? She's got plenty of firepower, especially compared to the Javelin. In case you wanted to upgrade, I thought you should know. You're welcome, by the way. Happy to be of service. Anything I can do to help get us off this bleeding ice cube, mate? Know what I mean? All right, that's it. Talk to you later. It's amusing. Fahad writes his emails like he talks. And like he talks, it's almost impossible to understand. 
But we now have the Centurion, and I can guarantee that the Centurion is not built the way I want it to be. So we're going to fuck with it. So we pull up the battle mix screen. We have the Centurion here. The Centurion currently is colored in a light tan. Uh, I'm sorry. Currently colored in like a uh, steel blue primary, light tan secondary with white as the tertiary. Uh, we'll be changing that as soon as we uh, make our own Merc outfit. Uh, I need to go to the loadout and mess with stuff. So here on the loadout screen, the screen is broken basically into two columns. The column on the left is all of the equipment that I have, and the column on the right is the mech and where to put it. We're going to go into detail mode because, you know, uh, I'm, I'm that good. We can see here that, as before, we have an AC-10, two medium lasers, one LRM-10 string, uh, and two heat sinks. So, I do not play the Centurion with LRM. So we're going to remove that. I'm actually going to take all the heat sinks. So, uh, I can max the armor. And by max the armor, I mean max it, not accidentally strip it like I just did. And then we have to adjust. So usually for me, I do approximately 30% maximum armor on the rear and then 70% maximum armor on the front. So in this instance, the center torso has 64 tons of total armor, or not 64 tons, 64 units. Uh, every six, I think, is a ton, so it has like 10 tons on the front. So I am putting uh, 20 on the rear and 44 on the front. I usually do the same with my torsos, so that's 48, 15. I always round up, usually when it comes to armor on most mechs, because when I try to equip them, some mechs are rather finicky. And you need to shave armor off, and since I am anal, I like round numbers. So twos, fives, zeros, all perfect. Like right now, my front torsos, on my front right, my front uh, my uh, front left torso, I have 33, and I am currently at 41.4 tons. So I already know two pieces of armor I could take right off to bring me to 32 armor in the front, which is a happier number. We're going to keep our AC-10. AC-10 is fun. We're going to check to see. We don't have any SRM, so we're going to leave our missile slot in. Uh, which means we can load up on ammo. Ammo is friend. So we'll pop four tons of AC-10 ammo. Split it across my shoulders. And then we're going to just cram heat sinks in here because the game is going to complain if I am underweight. And I don't. Complaining is bad. Looks like I need to shave off some more armor. Because if I put another heat sink in there, I'm going to go over. Actually, you know what? Oh, can do you have AC 10 half ammo? Uh, I remember how to do this. I remember they do not. Dookie. Okay. So let us shave off. Now we're down to 49.25. Just take some armor off the cockpit, because, you know, who the fuck needs armor on the cockpit, right? Ah! Um. There we go. Then we get another heat sink. So, we have an AC-10, two medium lasers, and five single heat sinks, and four tons of ammo. We are never going to overheat, and with 160 rounds of AC-10 ammo, we're probably also not going to run out of bullets. All are good. We're going to tell Fahad to go ahead and do this. Fahad's going to bitch because we're currently inside of a 
non-industrial hub inside of a war zone. So that's going to cost us approximately 10,000 sea bills in order to do the job in 17 days. Back to our mission. It says here, the mission is called Takedown. Messages from Major Rihanna Campbell. Decades ago, this planet was the epicenter of a mining gold rush. Of course, it wasn't gold the miners were after, but rhodium. It was boom then bust for most of the companies, which means there was a lot of abandoned infrastructure left behind. One of these mining locations is where the raiders are currently holed up. You can expect a larger enemy presence than we saw at the power plant commander. You will need to eliminate all of them and destroy as much of the infrastructure as possible. Our employers want these raiders put out of business for good, so give them hell. And hell they shall receive. Now we go to our contract screen. We see that it is a demolition type mission. Campaign. We're going to be on glacial ice in the morning. The visibility will be excellent. 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 We've located the Raiders base of operations decades ago. This planet was the epicenter of the tower. Okay. There are Raiders. Hold up. Yeah. Uh, uh, Spears says the same thing uh, Major, Major Campbell says. So we're going to negotiate since we are going to be using our bigger mech. I am 100% taking 400,000 sea bills in damage coverage insurance and two sea bill payout, which is going to bring us to a total of uh, 725,000 sea bills in our pockets, 400,000 sea bills to cover damages and three salvage shares. Confirm that out. We are going to be in, we are now in the ready where we tell the javelin to stuff it and we pop in our centurion. Ready up. We get a warning that, hey, you have to wait for time to start. This is important because in some instances, uh, you have to pay bills too. Attention. Prepare for battle night departure. We are currently on Deberry 3. Ah, oh, the Centurion. One of my favorite workhorses. These raiders we're taking down are murderers and thieves, Commander. Don't show them any mercy. Mess with the bull, you get the horns. That's it. Exactly. I got enemy contacts up ahead, Commander. They must have detected us on the way in. So every once in a while the landing zone is hot, so I was being quiet so they could hear them, but we had two helicopters that were intercepting us. Um, I missed a shot with an AC-10, got them with my lasers, and then the Leopard hit him with a large laser. Once again, the uh, everything is white because we are on an ice planet. The hills are presumably glacier boulders. Uh, you can see off in the distance, there's a very high wall with that sort of deep blue that you get in like ice caves up in glaciers that of like that ancient ice. It's actually very, very pretty. Um, surrounded by white and then closer, it seems to be a little more dirty. I have two vehicles on scope. Just got hit with some LRMs. Tank doesn't want to die. Oh, that was a manticore. Big tank would explain why it didn't die as soon as I hit it with an AC-10. Uh, it has LRMs, it has an AC something, and a PPC. They hurt. Uh, that was a pop-up saying that I lost my network connection, which doesn't really affect me. We have an aircraft. Shot went wide. Aircraft is down. We have another LRM carrier. Boom! Got him with the AC-10 at a range of about 500 meters. Scorpion. Got him. About 350 with the AC-10 down. 
if Igor warning. I took a wrong turn. I zigged when I should have zagged. I'm about a kilometer off of my intended target. Because I was too busy chasing helicopters. Igor is on visual. Nice. One shot with the AC-10 to the uh, right-hand side of the Igor, getting it in its right-hand engine and dropped it immediately. We are now descending into a recess in the glacier where the compound is that we are about to fuck up. Oh, that's why the internet died. The, uh, there's a fuck all massive like storm. Now. So while I'm fighting on the Berry 3, it is pissing rain outside. That's okay. I got helicopters above me. There we go. Got one with an AC-10 to the underbelly and the other one got lasered. That is a scorpion tank also down. We are taking the right hand entrance into the base. There's a tank. There was a tank. Uh, the base. The, oh, there we go. Hovercraft. Goodbye. Alright, so now we're just gonna start fucking up the, uh, fucking up the base. These missions, you go through one of each, is kind of to teach you how to do it. So right now we are walking through, uh, I think these are people's homes. This is definitely storage. And we are just kicking the crap out of everything. Because we don't want the raiders to live here. Raiders are bad. I see explosive pipes, so we're going to light those up. That's always fun. We don't kick over... Okay, these aren't fueled as water. We're going to destroy their water supply. Yes. War cry. Uh, fuel depot is down. We have bird in the air. AC-10 to the rotors. It's fucked. There's a tank somewhere, goddammit. There it is. Tank is also down. That's a fuel tank. We don't we don't fuck with fuel pipes. It's close. Another aircraft. Shot went high. Got it with the laser. Uh, I got hit again. Oh, there's a tank behind me. So usually I should just focus on destroying the uh the facility, but kicking tanks over is fun. <laughs> These shots are going into infrastructure building. Uh, oh, those are fuel tanks. We don't kick fuel tanks. They explode. Gotta try and mitigate all the free damage we can. We are currently under half on our right-hand side, pretty much. Which is not good. Excellent work, Commander. Now get to the extraction zone. Roger that. On the Centurion, you want to take damage on the left-hand side. Because all of your expensive stuff is on the right hand side. And usually I'm pretty good about that. Um, it's one of the skills I got in MWO. We have an aircraft coming hot. Miss low. Miss again. He is above my firing arc for my laser. Got that one. Blind shot through the cockpit. By blind shot through the cockpit, I mean he is currently standing immediate or flying immediately above the Centurion, so I cannot move the torso enough to see. Uh, but since my ha! Uh, that was a that was a really good shot with an AC-10 between two pillars of ice that were rather small and sniped him right out of the air. Uh, when they are directly above the Centurion, um, I can still hit them. Uh, using sensors and the fact that my AC-10 is on an actuated arm so I can aim far above the firing arc of the torso. Uh, same with far to the right uh, and a little bit to the left. Missed that shot. A, uh, a rock jumped in the way. 
Oh my god, it is pissing rain outside. I really hope my windows of my Jeep are up. I'm detecting an unknown battle mag. Yeah! We're gonna have to go. We're gonna fuck up a locust. When you see it, get a sensor lock on the target. At least I think it's copy that. Oh, that the sun on this planet is amazing. Uh, it's this sort of same sort of blue as uh, that is a spider. Same sort of blue as like the glacier ice. Um, spider has a fucked up leg. Where you at, fucker? Oh, hey, it's behind me. Its right leg is damaged. God damn, hit a rock. I shot between its legs like a pro. It makes up for it with speed and agility. A deadly combination. A deadly combination. This one seems to have pre-existing damage on its right leg. If you're having trouble hitting the critical areas, try focusing fire there instead. You may be able to... Got it. Popped its leg. Oh, he wants to fight? Too bad. Center torso. He is about to go up glowing. Is he? Is he? Oh, no! Nope, I didn't make his reactor go. He's good. Spider make us down. We took some damage. He shot me right in the fucking cockpit. It's a good thing I took all that extra armor off. I would have hated to be safe. So we are currently passing the ruins of the facility that I was destroying when I didn't need to destroy it. When I told you I was one kilometer off of the target. A little extra damage never hurt, I suppose. Our leopard comes in and is currently hovering over the glacier. You can see cinders from where the exhaust is igniting, I presume, the hydrogen. I just fucking what? That was the sh sound of a shell whizzing by my head. All right, we are on the mission complete screen. We see that we got more reputation. We have 769,500 uh, words are hard. 769,500 feet. We are on the salvage screen. There are two PPCs, which usually would be good, but this early in the game are not. Ah, an SRM-6, which is what we are looking for. And then medium lasers, an AC-5. We're going to get some malasers. Oh, that's another joke you're going to hear a lot. Uh, Tazi and I will go into fits of being neck beards, or mech beards, I should say, uh, and saying malaser and tipping our helmets whenever we happen to find a bunch of malasers. So you have that to look forward to. All right, we are on the scorecard portion of the screen where it shows I did 22 kills, 9 of them were air units, 12 of them were vehicles, 1 mech, took 84 damage, dealt 404 damage, total damage costs of the mech estimated is 44,500. This is the campaign debrief screen for takedown. Major Rihanna Campbell says, that spider mech might be small, but it's also fast. Excellent work taking it out. Thanks to you, the Raider forces have been all but eliminated and their infrastructure destroyed. Best of all, I just heard back from Spears. The mining company couldn't be happier with our efforts and have been and have expedited the transport contract aboard the inbound jump ship. We are about to be given a second life, Commander. We claim our bonus of 50,000 sea bills and we are going to end the episode here for today. So we're going to save this bad boy up. Uh, it is currently at 49 minutes. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope I covered and you guys saw. Uh, bad choice of words. Saw. Hope you heard all of the detail that you needed to completely understand what was going on. Um, so uh, I was wrong. It doesn't, this isn't the mission where we unlock co-op. Hopefully the next mission is, and I'm going to keep saying that until co-op is unlocked. Uh, 
because I don't actually remember the sequence of campaign missions. Because it has been a while. And also, my brain doesn't work. Anyways, this is Tithus once again. Uh, Lance Commander of the rogue version of Nikolai's Cavaliers. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow.